Tell me what we're seeing over the skies of Cleveland tonight, why we're getting so many calls and videos and everything. Well, actually, for two reasons, Kelly. We, uh, uh, we have been enjoying some very clear skies here the last couple of nights, and we'll enjoy one, one more tomorrow night. But uh, besides the clear skies, we had a pass of a group of satellites called Starlink. And we've seen these before, but not quite like, uh, like we saw tonight here. They flew almost directly over northeastern Ohio, about 60 degrees above us. And we were able to see that quite well. And they were, they'll continue to move. And it was just uh, right around, uh, pretty close in the 7 o'clock hour, just bright enough that they could be seen. We may see them again, but uh, it's hard to say uh, because each successive time they go around the Earth, uh, their orbit changes, they spread out a lot more, and they're not nearly as bright. So, so we've got the best pass for them tonight. So a lot of fun. And with all the things uh, floating in the sky, we, there's good reason to ask, what are those up there? Yeah, exactly. Everybody's so interested in it. Um, these are Elon Musk, I believe, this is Starlink. And what are they used for? Is it mostly internet communication, that kind of thing? Correct. That's the idea at this point. And so uh, I've yet to see the, the results of these, but more and more are going up all the time here. And it's an uh, it, interesting artifact to see those up there. Uh, after a while, as I said, they'll become higher and therefore not visible. The problem with them is purely astronomical. It, that when we're photographing the heavens, looking for asteroids that could actually come into contact with Earth at some point, the Starlink uh, satellites actually smear everything out. There's just horizontal lines. It looks like a cat or something uh, scratched across the, uh, the image. And it is interfering more and more because uh, I forget how many of these Starlinks that they're, they still have to send up there. But, uh, but aside from, from that, it's interesting that people are taking uh, taking advantage and having a look up, especially with these warmer temperatures like this. Yeah, and I want to ask you too. I have to ask you since I have you here. Um, the DoD just had a, a news conference a little bit ago and pretty much said, um, you know, don't panic. They think a lot of these things that we're shooting down since the first balloon from China came over um, are weather related, smaller objects. But what, what struck me is that she said they're really taking a look at what's going on up there now in light of what happened with China and this airspace. What, what is your take on them saying that? Should we be worried that we're, we're in an invasion here? I mean, or is this just something that's happened all the time, but now we're really, or they're, maybe they're letting us know what's going on. Like, what's your take? My take is, uh, it sounds like this is not the first time that this is happening. I, and frankly, I'm a little surprised that they haven't been proactive about this. This is not the first time, not at all, that uh, balloons have done uh, incursions like this. And who knows what else was uh, shot down uh, recently. That information will come out very, very quickly. Uh, they have no choice then to re reveal some of this information. But I am surprised that, uh, that we're now becoming proactive. Goodness knows how many of these in the past have actually been flying over and they've been more or less ignored. I'm a little surprised. Uh, incursion into national airspace, I'm surprised, is uh, is not being dealt with on a regular basis. And so I, I'm, uh, uh, I hope we address this and I hope uh, governments, uh, for whatever reason, uh, take the positive steps and knock it off. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're into UFOs and 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 all of that, and and you know, believe and and the whole and like what you do, you've got to be really, uh, I mean, just kind of encouraged that are we like, you know, the big questions that are out there. We really got to be like a turning point here. I mean, this is unprecedented. I was just watching something on the History Channel the other day, and they were talking about all these declassified uh, things that have come out, all the things that we see all the time, and now I it just, it's, I mean, I just watched that like two days ago, and now this is happening, and it's like. I mean, it's got to be exciting for you guys in the community to think that maybe we are going to get, you know, some type of explanation or something that's, that's you know, as to what's happening. And then maybe people can understand if there is something out there that scare us and it's the truth and be, you know, kind of more uh, transparent on it. True. But the most likely uh, aspect of, of this, uh, these incursions like this is uh, uh, not aliens, not, not any, not aliens at all. Uh, that uh, foreign governments are launching uh, perhaps 
scientific payloads, uh, that balloon uh, from China, it could have literally be uh, atmospheric investigation, uh, purely scientific. It can get away from it, absolutely. Uh, some of these other artifacts as well, we just don't know. And even though on some of these documentaries that we see where the United States is releasing information about, well, here's an image of this, here's an image of that, but they will not release the technical data behind those cameras, behind those images there. In order to be accepted by the scientific community, we have to have all the information, not just the, the graphic or the image itself moving through the sky. That's not enough. We need to have all the information. That's the power of science. Reveal it to everyone, and everyone has an equal crack at it, and it must be met with the most critical, the most uh, skeptitude to it. So, but anyway, yeah, I'm glad that um, that we're seeing more and more is being uh, revealed to us.